welcome to Auto Mundial, the weekly car news and review show, where this week we're taking a look at Renault's impressive new Megane E-Tech as it takes on the Volkswagen ID3. We also have a new concept car from Audi and an EV from Dacia. Plus some fast Cadillacs and Porsche's fastest SUV yet, the KN Turbo GT. That's all coming up. First, though, the news. Volkswagen has opened up a new battery research laboratory in Germany as part of its push towards electrification. The new lab in Salzgitter will be responsible for developing and testing new battery technologies for VW Group cars, while also providing a battery recycling facility. By the end of 2022, the site will employ over a thousand people, with 160 or so currently developing new batteries. And VW isn't alone in investing in a dedicated battery research facility. Ford has also announced plans to build a dedicated EV research and manufacturing plant in Michigan, and we expect many other big companies to follow. Also in the news, Ford, Argo AI and American supermarket chain Walmart have come together to launch a new autonomous delivery service. A fleet of driverless test vehicles is to make grocery deliveries around Miami, Austin, Texas and Washington, D.C. If successful, the program will be expanded across the USA. This is the second of these trials for Walmart and Ford, having tried initially a couple of years ago, while self-driving Fords have also been tested as ride-hailing cars in Miami, Austin and DC as early as 2018. While there are now plenty of expensive premium EVs to choose from, cheap electric cars are still fairly thin on the ground. Even a basic Volkswagen E-Up or Renault Zoe will cost well over £20,000 before any government grants. Now though, Dacia is set to spice things up with this, the Spring. Closely related to the Indian market Renault Quid, the Spring is now Europe's cheapest electric car. While it may have SUV design cues like the high suspension and chunky bumpers, this is very much a city car with dinky proportions. In fact, it's only a little bigger than the VW Up, despite its impressive 300-litre boot. Inside, it's predictably basic, with swathes of black plastic lifted by bits of brightly coloured trim. But this is what has made Dacia so popular. It's no-nonsense approach to car building, leaving out the bits you don't really need in the pursuit of good value. You can spec an optional infotainment screen though, complete with CarPlay and Android Auto, as well as air conditioning, electric door mirrors, and even a reversing camera if you're feeling particularly flush. Powering the spring is a 43 brake horsepower electric motor paired up to a 26.8 kilowatt hour battery. Now that may sound akin to the setup on an old milk float, but it will get the plucky Dacia up to a heady 78 miles per hour. The WLTP range is 140 miles from a single charge, but that's likely to be higher if you stick to urban driving. So while the spring won't be best suited to long distances, it will be great for people who do all their driving in the city. It can be charged to 8% in under an hour from a 30 kilowatt charger, and it has a turning circle of just 4.8 meters. While there are undoubtedly more rounded EV options out there, we think it'll be a while until there's another out there for the price of a petrol super mini. For now, the Spring is only available in continental Europe, but Dacia is considering bringing it to the UK with right-hand drive. When the Porsche Cayenne first hit the market way back in 2003, it set a new precedent for the way SUVs could drive. It handled almost like a saloon car and went just as fast. Now in its third generation, 
Porsche has decided to diversify the range with this, the Cayenne Coupe. While the likes of BMW and Audi were quick to expand their SUV lineups, Porsche took its time. But with the success of the BMW X6 and now the Audi Q8, Porsche has created a lower, sleeker version of its popular Cayenne. Starting at the front, it all looks pretty normal. The windscreen is slightly more raked, but it's barely noticeable. It's not until you get further back that you notice any changes. Sticking to the same recipe as rival coupe SUVs, the roofline slopes off towards the back, creating a sportier look at the cost of rear headroom and luggage space. At the back there are some more obvious changes. There's an adaptive spoiler, and the number plate has been moved down from the tailgate to the bumper, to create what Porsche calls an optically lower look. It works, and emphasises the distinctive light bar. Inside, you'd be hard-pressed to spot any differences from the normal KN. They both get the same dashboard and class-leading infotainment, but it's in the back where you'll notice the changes. The three-seat bench has been ditched, and instead Porsche has fitted two chairs, more in keeping with the coupe's sportier image. To try and solve the headroom issue, the rear seats are mounted 30mm lower than in the normal car, but taller passengers will still suffer. It's available with all the same powertrain options as the regular KN, meaning there are some very quick versions to choose from. And now, Porsche has created a brand new one, quite possibly the fastest SUV we've ever seen. It's called the Turbo GT, and the numbers boggle the mind. Its 4-litre V8 produces 631 brake horsepower, 89 more than the standard turbo. The top speed is increased to 186, and the acceleration, the acceleration is mind-blowing. This is a big 2.3-ton SUV, and it can do 0 to 62 in 3.1 seconds. Porsche was clearly fed up of Lamborghini and Bentley stealing its thunder as makers of fast 4x4s. It hasn't gone over the top with the add-ons though. The body kit is slightly different, as are the wheels but otherwise it's hard to tell that this is the fastest KN ever built. It is lower though, and the chassis has been fine-tuned to provide almost sports car-like handling. It's an incredible achievement, but is it the one to go for? There aren't many, if any, SUVs that can keep up with the KN, but this, the BMW X6M competition, isn't far off. Like the Porsche, it's a coupe version of an existing car, but it's still absolutely massive. It's powered by a 625 brake horsepower V8, which is good enough for 750 newton meters of torque and 0 to 60 in 3.8 seconds. Equipped with two twin scroll turbochargers, this is the most powerful engine BMW has ever put in a road car. This behemoth of an engine is connected to the eight-speed driving all four wheels. On the starting front, there is the familiar BMW kidney grille and dual vertical bars, which are specific to M variants. At the bottom, there is a huge frontal cooling area to keep the power plant from bursting through the bonnet. The M-specific 21-inch wheels sit in front of some enormous new brakes, and the side profile features special vents and M door mirrors, while at the back there's a spoiler and some naughty exhausts. Inside, there's plenty of carbon fibre on the centre console and the dash, and lots of reminders that you're in an M car. It's the Porsche, though, that wins this battle. The BMW is very fast, but nothing can match the KN. Electric SUVs may eventually go quicker, but for now, the KN Turbo GT is the ultimate performance 4x4. Join us again after the break as we preview Renault's all new electric Megane. Still to come, 
Renault's new ID3 rival, but first. A few weeks ago, we featured the Audi Skysphere, a breathtaking concept car designed as a futuristic electric Grand Tourer. It was refreshing to see a big manufacturer let its hair down a bit, especially at a time when few companies have the budgets for frivolous concept cars, with motor shows now few and far between. And now, Audi has done it again with another concept, the Grand Sphere. A luxury four-door saloon, the Grand Sphere is another elegant EV that could be the inspiration for the next generation A8. It's a long, low-slung car with a soft front-end design, with a tapered rear end that has more than a hint of Aston Martin Vanquish Zagato about it. But it's on the inside where the Grand Sphere really impresses. In autonomous mode, the steering wheel and pedals fold away, leaving you with a masterclass in interior design to enjoy as you silently drive along. The infotainment is projected onto a wooden surface under the windscreen and can be used for video conferencing or watching TV. Most of the switch gear is on the doors, allowing for a clutter-free dashboard and a beautiful centre console with a drinks dispenser and glasses. All the cabin materials are sustainably sourced and there's no real leather on show. Powering this 5.4 metre saloon is a battery that takes up the entire length of the wheelbase allowing for a completely flat floor. Power is said to be 710 bhp, with a range of 466 miles, but these numbers are of course to be taken with a pinch of salt. This is a concept car after all. The Sky Sphere and the Grand Sphere are the first two of a trio of new Sphere concepts, with an SUV on the way to complete the lineup. Whether or not they're a true indication of where Audi is heading remains to be seen. But for now, we're just happy to see some new concept cars in 2021. While you may imagine that any good American muscle car needs some lurid paintwork and a big V8, Cadillac is aiming to prove otherwise with this, the new and improved CT4V Blackwing. The hottest version of Caddy's handsome compact saloon, the Blackwing is the USA's answer to the Mercedes C63 and the BMW M3. What makes this different from most muscle cars though is what's hiding under the bonnet. Muscle car devotees may recoil in horror when they count the cylinders and find it lacking a pair, but this twin turbocharged 3.6 litre V6 puts out a healthy 472 horsepower, eight more than the regular CT4V. It still gets the same six-speed manual gearbox with the option of a new 10-speed automatic in place of the regular eight-speed box. To keep the caddy keen in the corners, the chassis has also had a few tweaks to help it live up to its menacing Blackwing name. The Brembo brakes have been beefed up front and rear, and the new wheels are wrapped in Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tyres. It's been on a diet too, shedding 35kg from the standard car. To help it stand out, it gets a lot of carbon fibre goodies. There are various vents dotted around and a purposeful looking rear spoiler and diffuser setup with four aggressive tailpipes. The outcome of all these modifications are 0 to 60 in under 4 seconds and a top speed of 189 miles per hour. However, the CT4 isn't the only Cadillac to have been given the black wing treatment. This is its big brother, the CT5V black wing, and it doesn't simply make do with a turboed V6. Oh no, this is old school. A genuine rival for the likes of the BMW M5 and Audi RS6, the CT5V gets an almighty 6.2 litre V8 with a supercharger bolted on for good measure. The result is 695 brake horsepower, making this the most powerful production car Cadillac has ever built. 
all that power is sent to the rear wheels via an electronic limited slip differential. Zero to 60 is quoted at 3.7 seconds, while top speed is said to be over 200 miles per hour. Best of all though, it's a manual, something which sadly can no longer be said of its European competition. Of course, there is an automatic option that would arguably suit this executive saloon better, but a new saloon car with a manual gearbox and a V8 with almost 700 horsepower is a joyous creation indeed. Like its smaller stablemate, the CT5 has received a number of upgrades to ensure it's as good at corners as it is at quarter miles, with new wheels and tyres and optional carbon ceramic brakes. Sadly, neither of these glorious super saloons will make it over to the UK, but American buyers can save plenty of cash choosing one of these over any equivalent BMW or Mercedes. As far as family hatchbacks go, the Renault Megane has always played second fiddle to its old German rival, the Volkswagen Golf. It's a fine car, but as much as reviewers praise it and judging panels award it, it's always the Golf that buyers want. Now though, there is a new one, and it's not like we were expecting it to be. This is the Megane E-Tech, and as you can probably deduce from the name, it's electric. Putting the Megane nameplate on a new EV is a statement of intent as it takes on VW's electric hatchback, the ID3. And surely, if any manufacturer is ready to lead the way in electric hatchbacks, it's Renault. It's been building the Zoe for just shy of a decade now with enormous success. And then there's the French brand's alliance with Nissan. The new Megane E-Tech is built on an all-new platform that it'll share with the new Nissan Araya. It's about the same size as the existing ICE Megane, but it's more spacious thanks to a longer wheelbase. The crossover styling makes it look bigger and chunkier than before, but this is still a family hatch rather than an SUV. While it is a big departure in terms of Megane's styling, it's clearly a Renault with the sharp LED lights at the front and the brand's attractive new logo on the nose. The overhangs are short and the bonnet is small thanks to the lack of an engine, meaning there's more room inside. The big wheel arches are filled by optional 20-inch wheels, while the clean modern look is completed with some flush door handles that pop out when you need them. Step inside and you find a beautiful but simple interior, dominated by two enormous screens. The infotainment system is a new one called Open R-Link, powered by Android. It consists of two screens, a landscape one behind the steering wheel in place of instruments that can display navigation through Google Maps, and a 12.3-inch portrait touchscreen with crystal clear graphics. The system is designed for easy integration with Android phones, but it does feature Apple CarPlay. Elsewhere in the cabin is a digital rearview mirror, similar to the ones found on Land Rovers and lots of sustainable and recycled materials. The new Megane is available with either a 40 or 60 kilowatt per hour battery with respective maximum ranges of 186 and 292 miles. Power is sent to the front wheels only, with base spec cars getting 128 bhp, with top of the range cars getting 215. Performance isn't particularly electric, with the higher power car reaching 62 from rest in 7.4 seconds, topping out at 99 miles per hour. It does get regenerative braking though, with different levels operated through paddles like we've seen previously on electric Kias. So, how does its main rival compare? Well, like Renault, Volkswagen has played things pretty safe with the ID3 when it comes to styling. VW didn't want its mainstream EV to stand out like a sore thumb on the road, and it doesn't. It's a smart looking car with about the same footprint as a Golf. And this understatement continues inside. It's bang up to date and suits the car, but at the same time it doesn't feel like it's been built to a price. Very un-Volkswagen. 
The bright cabin features a big central infotainment screen, like pretty much any other car in 2021, and it has a digital instrument display in place of traditional dials. In fact, the only real giveaway to its electric underpinnings is the lack of central gear selector, with forwards and reverse instead being selected via a switch on the instrument pod behind the steering wheel. Like the Renault, it's spacious and practical, but we feel ourselves more drawn to the Megane. It looks fantastic and the familiar Megane branding will appeal to buyers looking at getting their first EV. While the Renault Megane may still sit in the Golf shadow, it certainly isn't in the ID3s. Join us again next week on Auto Mundial as we check out the new Mercedes C-Class. <laughs>